Thank you for joining me again, Brahmas fans. This is Troy DePew, the Texas Brahmas Examiner. I have on the phone with me a rookie who, in my opinion, should at least be a top contender for CHL Rookie of the Year. At 23, this Richville, Minnesota native has set a new Brahmas record for consecutive shutouts with three back-to-back -back blanks. He also, more impressively, set a new Central Hockey League record for consecutive minutes without allowing a goal at 238 minutes and 31 seconds. He, he has consistently ha held a goals against average of around 1.90 and a save percentage percentage average around 9.25, which has been league leading throughout the season. In other words, this man is stingy between the pipes. He was named to the CHL All-Star Game as a reserve goalie. That's right, I got on the phone with you, Mr. Mark Guggenberger. Thank you for taking the time with me today, Mr. Guggenberger. Yeah, no problem. But uh, you, you're not a stranger to Texas hockey, are you? You uh, looks like you played for the Texas Tornado for a few games in the 08, 0, 07, 08 season. Is that right? Yeah, I uh, was down here for a couple weeks in between uh, playing for a couple teams in the Western Hockey League. So, what what actually brought you to Texas in the first place, and you know what brought you back? What's that? What what's uh what brought you to Texas in the first place, and then what brought you back to Texas to play for the Brahmas? Uh, I mean, in the first place, it's just uh, a place to keep playing, and it was uh, after high school I got an opportunity to come down here for a little bit and uh, test it out. And then uh, I obviously uh, went to university last year, and I met uh, Forby McPherson, and he had a strong connection with the. Texas Brahmas down here, and uh, they, uh, they came highly recommended. Cool. Now, you know, I mentioned you were named to the All-Star team. How did that feel to be named an All-Star in your rookie season? Oh, it was great. I mean, I, uh, I came into this uh, this team, this organization, as kind of a, a backup goalie, and uh, had to kind of work my way up and uh, prove myself a bit in the first half of the season. It was... Uh, it was great to be honored like that. I'm sure it was quite an honor be, to be named to the team in general. However, I, I feel and will continue to feel that you should have been named the starting goaltender. The stats said you were and are the best goaltender in the league, and with you setting new records, it shows that you are the best the league has seen in quite a while. The stats also show that you're not just a quick flash in the pan, meaning that you're really that good, not just some lucky or, you know, got on a hot streak. You really are consistently stingy. And I know it's really semantics, you know, the way you word it. All three goaltenders get to play one period during the All-Star game. But when filling out your hockey resume, I think you should have been named as the starting All-Star goalie. Well, I mean, there's a lot of, lot of good players, a lot of good goalies in the league. So, I mean, I was... Uh... I was just honored to be there, and uh, the guy we had starting the game, uh, Nick Boucher from Fort Wayne, he's uh, he's been in the league for you know a couple of years at least, and uh, he's definitely one of the top goalies in the league. Also, speaking of the All Stars, who have you? Who would you have wanted to see on the All Star team with you from the Brahmas? Uh, I mean, we got a lot of a lot of good forwards up front. I mean, Chad Ward's obviously. Uh, I mean, he's. He's a, a factor for us every night. He's uh, one of the absolutely. Oh, well, I think I think he is the leading scorer for the Brahmas now, or something like that. He's uh, I mean, he's just been a proven scorer in this league. And uh, being on the back end, we got a number of guys that could uh, step up and play. And like Ross Rulo has been here. He's won a championship here. And I mean, all these guys are deserving. That Rulo is a really a, a quite a story. I, uh... I actually had an opportunity to talk with him before the season started and, and talk to him about the the amazing journey that he made come to the team through the open tryouts that they have and getting the, getting on the team. Then he got cut and came back to the team and ended up being a part of the championship winning team. That's a, that is quite a story that Rulo's got, and he is one heck of a good defenseman. Absolutely. He, uh, he definitely makes my life a lot easier every night, and uh, he's, a, he's a big part of our team. Now, hockey players are noted as being very superstitious and goalies more so than any of your other players, doing things like not changing socks or washing their, washing their jersey or their socks or eating the same meal before each game if they're on a winning streak. So 
I gotta ask, how crunchy how crunchy are those game day socks? Uh, I actually don't have anything quite like that, but uh, I mean, obviously, when you're doing well, you try and keep uh, keep your game day routine uh, keep it the same, and uh, you know, hope it uh, keeps working for you. Do you have any superstitious superstitious type rituals that you do go through? Uh, you know, a couple. I uh, I don't know if I can really reveal them. They're kind of secret. <laughs> Yeah, goalie really is kind of an intriguing position to me. Uh, it's the only position that I never played, um, and yeah. it just it just seems like it's a love hate relationship between the goalie and the fans. Goalies are either loved by the fans when the team wins, or hated when the team loses. Even if the goalie played an amazing game and the D left them out to drive, left them out to dry, it just seems like the fans still kind of blame it on the goalie if they lose. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's something every goalie goes through, and uh, I've uh, been lucky enough to deal with that since I was about 10 years old, you know? Like, you get all the credit when you win, and you take a lot of the blame when you lose, so... I mean, it, it is what it is, and you just gotta kind of go with it and uh, hope for the best. So, what made you decide to be a goalie when you were young? Uh, my dad was a goalie when he was uh, younger in his playing days, so... I mean, I got uh, I got a chance when I was younger to uh, move up and play with the older kids because they needed a goalie, and uh, I just happened to be the lucky guy to, you know, well, at least the the guy dumb enough to say yes to get uh, <laughs> chopped fired at me. So that's, uh, that's how it all started. Now, I actually was at the at the Fort Worth Convention Center game on Saturday, and I uh, I found out that I was actually sitting next to one of your old high school. Uh, teammates. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I heard that. He uh, he's a good buddy of mine. I grew up with, and uh, I ended up transferring back to my uh, hometown for my senior year of high school, and I got to play with uh, all these guys I grew up with. So that was uh, that was something special. And it was really nice to have him down here on Saturday and kind of get to check out what the Brahmas are all about. Yeah, he was. Quite a nice guy. It was really interesting sitting next to next to somebody that uh, that knew you from from back then, and you know he didn't share any any embarrassing stories or anything like that. But you know he was just saying that it was an honor for him to have played with you back then, and, and an honor to see you progressing like you have now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, it's great to keep in touch with uh, the old teammates there, and I'm sure I'll have uh, a lot of lasting relationships from down here in Texas. Absolutely, man. I uh, I would love to stay in contact with you no matter where you go, man. Yeah. You uh you did mention that you do yoga. Um, is there any other type of like off ice training or or anything like that that you do specific to a goaltender? Uh, I mean, yoga is great. I mean, it's pretty relaxing. It's good on your flexibility and your strength oh, yeah. too. So it's. I mean, it's it's growing in popularity, you know, every year. There's uh, guys from the NHL doing it on down. So, I mean, it's you know, it's just a good way to relax and uh, make sure you're staying flexible. Yeah, absolutely. If I wasn't afraid I would break my leg, I might give it a shot. But uh. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I mean, they got beginner classes too. I mean, I'm still uh, I'm still working through those. <laughs> Yeah, I just uh, watching some of those positions. I just, I just fear that I would break my leg or break my neck. One of the two. <laughs> yeah. Um, every goalie may answer this differently, but when you were uh, playing, would you rather your D try to block the shot from the wing, you know, kind of the outside wing, or would you rather them not not block that, try to block that shot, and you know, kind of let you take the shot from the wing so that you're, they're not screening you? Uh, I mean, it it all it all depends on uh, who the shooter is, where it's coming from, and uh, if they really think they can block it or not. So, uh, I mean, it's something we've been working on uh, quite a bit down the stretch here, and it helps to have you know one goalie in there the D men get used to, and right. we can we can all kind of play off each other. And uh, but I mean, obviously, like if I can see it, I'm pretty confident about stopping it. So, I mean, we've uh, we've had probably the best team in the league for blocking shots this year so right I mean, that's obviously that's a that's a big part of my success too so 
I mean, either way, it's, uh, we just kind of go with it. Yeah, that's just, being a defensive player, you know, that I was, you know, playing in the, you know, like the rec leagues and stuff, it was always interesting each year. You get a different goalie and you kind of got to adjust your play to how they want, you know, hey, don't block this kind of shot. Hey, don't block a shot from over here, but I want you to block this shot. Or It, it, it really, like you said, it does help if you have the same goaltender in there. And, you know, while we hated to see Silverthorne, you know, go, I'm guessing it was the best decision for him, so kudos to him, and we we loved him here, but uh, you stepped back in there, and you owned that debt. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was great for me to come in here and play under a guy like Silver. Like He's a great guy on and off the ice, and he was uh, a true professional, and that's uh, something I'm working at every day. Now, i got to go into asking some questions about the shootout. What what is the the hardest part of a shootout as a goalie? Uh, I mean it's just kind of reading what these guys have to do. I mean they have uh, a whole lot of bag of tricks, and you know they're obviously good shooters, so you can't give them too much net. So I mean you really just gotta wait it out and try and react to whatever they do. Do you react to how like how far you come out as far as? whenever they're coming to pick up the puck, how much speed they have, or do you kind of hang back a little bit and just kind of watch, or do you kind of have like a set point that you skate out to and then start moving slowly back in as they come in? Yeah, I usually uh, kind of approach each shot the same way and uh, kind of just go from there. It, uh, a lot of it depends on how fast they're coming in or like if they go out wide or they come down the middle, like, just kind of, you got to read each each shooter a little differently, and each each shot definitely a little differently. So, I mean, we've uh, we've had pretty good success as of late. We've had a few more guys step up and uh, score some goals for us, so that uh, obviously takes the pressure off me. That last shootout against Allen nearly gave me a heart attack. I can tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> I've yeah, they're. Uh, I've never seen a shootout go that long. I, I was over there with my pen and paper writing as quickly as I could and just about to have a heart attack on that one. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one of those instances where, I mean, I got a lot of help. They, uh, Alan's got some really good forwards, and they, uh, they managed to find the back of the net a few times there, and uh, our forwards just stepped up, and uh, they, they scored big goals, and we needed them. Well, you stopped a couple of good uh, good shots that they had that really kept us in there. I mean, that's a goalie in a shootout is your most valuable asset. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's uh, when you play so hard for 65 minutes and it comes down to, uh, you know, just a showcase, you know. It's one-on-one and, I mean, it's, you know, it's a fun part of the game. What's the what's the craziest move you've ever seen in a shootout? Oh, I've seen some good ones there, but uh, you know, it's. I think uh, I saw a guy score behind his back in the Western Hockey League. It was uh, a long shootout like that, like probably I think it went seventeen rounds or something. Like it was wow. just ridiculous, and the. Uh, I saw the guy uh, pull that move off in practice a few times, and then uh, to see him do it in the game was something else. Wow. <laughs> I bet that was pretty crazy. How are you guys, yeah. I mean, whenever it's going to a shootout that long, how are you guys as the goalies not just falling over dead after all that? Oh, I mean, you definitely are. Like, it, uh, it takes a toll on you after playing the whole game and then... Uh, you know, having to go through overtime and through a long shootout like that, it's definitely draining. But, uh, I mean, you just got to kind of fight through it and do the best you can. All right. Well, uh, I really do appreciate you taking the time with me today, Mr. Guggenberger, and I uh, look forward to seeing you seeing you back in action this weekend at Nitex. All right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir.